I guess you weren't even alive in 60 <laughs> Welcome back to Marvelous Videos with me, Ray Jericho. In a world where disguised aliens are living among us, we have the dashing, dynamic men in black. Ready to ensure the extraterrestrials don't put a toe behind the line, the epic characters, Agents K and J, have etched themselves into fans' hearts and minds, which even the Neuralizer cannot erase. These legendary characters, portrayed by fabulous actors Tommy Lee Jones and Will Smith, carry the movie franchise on their blockbuster shoulders, making MIB a phenomenal event in the sci-fi genre. But ever wonder what happened to Agents K and J after the third movie? And why were they missing in MIB International? In this video, we will explore these questions and more. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. How did their roles play out in the franchise? Elvis isn't dead, he just went home. The Men in Black movies had it all. From action, to adventure, to witty dialogues that kept fans coming back for more. The first MIB movie starts with Agent K, played by Tommy Lee Jones, recruiting the daring, slick cop James Edwards, played by Will Smith. K's partner, Agent D, retires from MIB after being unable to handle an alien. Meanwhile, James is chasing down a crook who soars off the roof of the Guggenheim Museum with superhuman speed. James then sees the crook's eyes blink unusually and realizes something is amiss. Later, K neuralizes James, but also decides to recruit him as his new partner. James's past is wiped out of the records, as K explains how MIB is a secret organization that works to regulate the aliens living on Earth. James takes on the identity of Agent J and partners up with K to monitor and curb any unusual alien activities in their city, while K plays the more mature, nonchalant role, having a handle on everything around him. Jay is the younger, risk-taking daredevil. K seemingly has no sense of humor, yet his dark humor comes to play when he shows Jay the Series 4 deatomizer, giving Jay hopes that he could use an ultra-cool gun, but instead hands him the tiny, noisy cricket. On the other hand, Jay is the cool guy of the duo, trying to smooth talk with the ladies and handing out some witty jabs along the way. The first MIB film introduced the two characters with almost opposite traits, but who always put their act together when the situation demands it. They develop an uncanny yet caring camaraderie between them, as they fight the dangerous and gigantic cockroach-like alien to prevent an alien invasion on Earth. At the end of the first film, Agent K decides it is time for him to retire, and tells Jay that he was training him to be his replacement all this while. A reluctant Jay grants K his wish and finds another partner for himself. Men in Black 2 takes off from where MIB-1 left off. We see Agent Jay trying to hold the reins of K's foundation. Unfortunately, the cool dude doesn't have a remotely cool partner. Jay has changed several partners by this point because they're either too harsh, too stupid, or too emotionally unstable. Jay seems like he is getting increasingly tired of performing an almost solo act. Meanwhile, there is a new alien prowling the streets of New York in the form of a Victoria's Secret lingerie model. This alien, named Selena, is made of tentacles and can even shapeshift. She and her partner, with two heads, Charlie and Scrat, are looking for the light of Zartha, hidden on Earth. A series of events and a murder lead Jay to realize that he needs his old partner Kay back to find this light and defeat Beats Serlina. Kay, who retired from MIB and was neuralized, is now working for the US Post Office. Kay, aka Kevin Brown, is his usual self, trying to organize everything around him and play by the book. He refuses to believe Jay when Jay tries to remind him of where he worked earlier. It's only when Jay speaks in an almost beatbox language with a fellow worker at the post office that Kay finds out that all his colleagues are, in fact, aliens. Kay finally agrees to partner with Jay, and then it was Jay's turn to prank Kay with the noisy cricket, calling it Kay's favorite weapon. Kay goes through the de-neuralizer, and the agent in him comes back with a bang. Kay goes from following Jay around to now taking the lead, and no matter how much Jay tries, he cannot help but let Kay call the shots. Once again, the duo saves the day by finding the light and sending it off the planet, and destroying the tentacled alien Serlina. Now, the third film in the series had an interesting take when the Bogdalite alien Boris the Animal escaped from imprisonment in 2012. 
and travels back in time to 1969 when Kay captured him. Instead, he kills Kay and changes the future. So, while Jay's left confounded about why everyone in the present has suddenly forgotten about Kay's existence, it is Agent O who deciphers that there could have been an anomaly in the timeline. Now, while Earth is under attack by the Boglodites, Jay takes a risky jump from an NY skyrise to travel back in time. This is when he meets a younger Agent K, played by Josh Brolin. Brolin has embodied every bit of Agent K's character, perfecting his somber stature, intellect, and bravado. K and Jay team up to save Griffin the Arcanan from Boris's attack, and of course, Jay is trying to ensure K stays alive. The movie was filled with exciting twists and turns. Towards the end, the Boris from 1969 and 2012 are killed, but another reveal that takes place is that Boris kills Agent Jay's father, who is a military officer. Jay didn't know that till after his father was dead, and he watched as a kid version of himself stepped out of a car and met K. So it turned out that K knew about James' existence before he recruited him in MIB. But what happens to the agents after MIB 3? Let's find out. Where are Agent J and Agent K now? Why do they not appear in Men in Black International? Men in Black International, a reboot of the MIB franchise, came along in 2019 with Chris Hemsworth playing Agent H and Tessa Thompson as Agent M. The basic premise of the movie follows the MIB suit, where the secret agency is working from a sleek office with cutting-edge gadgets and facilities. But the office is missing their celebrated agents, J and K, and we cannot fathom why MIB International did not bring back J and K in any form, except to pay a slight homage to them with a painting of the duo fighting an alien hung in Liam Neeson's office. There are no mentions of them in conversations or otherwise. It's like they hung the boots and are no longer part of the MIB, or worse, they are dead. But the film remains ambiguous about what has become of them. The only person who continues from the previous movie is Agent O, played by Emma Thompson. And although there were some sparks flying around Agent O and Agent K's characters in the third MIB movie, Agent O does not acknowledge K and J in MIB International. That seems a bit too harsh doesn't it? The makers of the film clarify that everyone involved in the three MIB films felt that the third MIB movie came to an emotional closure. Agent J finds out the crucial elements from his past, like his father's untimely death and that he had met K as a kid. J also understands that K was training him because he had always watched out for him. With all these factors falling into place in MIB 3, the film seemed to have concluded the storyline for Agents K and J. Rumors floating around back then suggested that even after MIB 3, the writers were trying to carve out a story that somehow merged with 21 Jump Street. This was likely to see the return of our favorite agents. Unfortunately, that idea was scrapped, and it went through several rounds of story ideas before MIB International came out. We can't help but wonder what a storyline with agents J and K from MIB and Schmidt and Jenko from 21 Jump Street would bring to the table. Let us know what you guys think about this. But the other question that fans wondered about was whether they could get the legends back for a cameo in MIB International. Fans were definitely eager to see Tommy Lee Jones and Will Smith don the black suits and sunglasses once again. However, MIB International decided against it. They felt the characters were too big, and a cameo would lead fans to believe they would get some more of the duo. Hmm, seems like a cover-up reason to us, but what do you think? We also wonder if MIB International focused on other agents to introduce a female in the mix. Agent J had a female partner for a short sprint when K was neuralized, but she didn't play a significant character. Agent M, on the other hand, plays a more central role in MIB International. In fact, the movie also showed Agent O trying to justify why it was still called Men in Black, despite having female agents. But this name change might not go down well with the fans, or will it? As we know, MIB International didn't live up to the standards of the previous MIB films, even with all the fancy gadgetry and great acting. And since the movie doesn't really say that Agent J and K have retired or died, we can only hope to see them come back in the forthcoming films. Fingers crossed. Before we go, we want to leave you with a fun fact. Did you know that Michael Jackson also wanted to be an MIB agent? MJ became a huge fan of the film and did a cameo in MIB 2, where he requested Zed for a position in MIB as Agent M. MJ didn't get in, but Tessa Thompson did. Let us know in the comments below what you guys think about the new MIB agents, and if you would want to see the old ones return to the screen to charm us with their fabulous rapport. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one, and be safe. Thanks, everyone. No, you won't.